Hi there, welcome to Holview Farm. We're uh, just heading out to do our evening chores and take you along. Um, Nikki's got our eggs for the day. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, we figured that we would show you the um, the coop. It's a little, all the gnats are coming out now. It's been so <laughs> humid. But um, yeah. we yeah. haven't shown off our coop because we're not like super happy with it. It's not what we would do. No, that's not um, what we want to do. But hey, it was here. It, it was works. here. We're using it. Yeah. Um, and we got babies. Oh, look at them perched up there. That's too funny. Hi. Yeah, we got some <laughs> baby bantams oh. going on. And then we got those two down oh, there. There's a bunch more eggs in here. Yeah, it's just collecting. Yeah, it's, I mean the nest box is nice. I like that. Um, it's not a terrible setup, but. We would do some things differently. We would prefer to have no floor in our chicken coop. And the reason for that is we like to do what's called the deep litter method, uh, where we bring in some carbonous material, we keep flipping it. We don't have to clean it out all the time. Um, the deep litter method works best if you've got no floor, if you're in contact with the soil where moisture and insects can kind of migrate in and out. We can take advantage Good of the natural breakdown processes. So um, one thing I would do differently, um, but the coop was here. We decided to start using it. And well, what do you know? A couple years later, we're still using it. So this is kind of a nice feature here. And we got this access to the nest boxes from the yeah. back. So pretty good Look at that. eggs. <laughs> so I let her out. I tried to, so this is our broody box. Um, that Joe was showing you. Oh, there's our other four. Um, those oh. are the real size chickens. Yeah, full size chickens. So Look she at... went broody. I put her in there and she hatched out her baby. She likes being in there. <laughs> so Jade actually went broody and she's sitting on the eggs from her because I put her in there and she wasn't happy and she wasn't sitting on them for three days. And I said, screw it. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Cause they're all supposed to hatch out next week. I have like eight eggs. That are supposed to hatch out so of hopefully real we'll eggs. Get some more full size chickens. Yes, yeah. Hopefully. And full size chickens. Get a lot better on the bantams than the big yeah. ones. Yeah, so now but I'm the just big like. The ones give us eggs, which we like. Yeah, and well, the bantams do too, but they're like quail size. And, and um, how, how do we have such a variety of colors with our eggs? Oh, because um, I'm into color. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we have a whole mixture. It's different breeds yeah, that need yeah. a different colored egg. So we got Americanas that give us the kind of Easter egg uh, blues and, and greens. And we have a couple true blue whitings and a couple true green whitings, which are a newer breed um, from McMurray that they offer. Um, his name's Whiting and he developed it, but it's a, like a Jade is one of those um, who I took a Cuckoo Marin, um, which laid the, the uh, which ones? Um, I think they do more of these guys, these dark eggs. Yeah. And then I put in... The Cuckoo Marins do like a darker chocolatey egg. Well, right? the French the French Cuckoo Marins are the ones that are like super, super dark. But we're getting these. These are oh, from our Marins. Okay. Um, they're the darkest we have. Gotcha. Um, but anyway, so anyways, Jade right here is an Easter Egger daddy and a Cuckoo Marin mama. And... We got um, another, it lays a different color. So if you take Americana and any of the dark egg layers, they will have babies and those females will lay a different shade of whatever it's supposed to be. And so, yeah, that's how we got Jade. And then, um, and then yeah, I have another whiting female. So I have two of those, um, daughter and mom combo. So we're taking a look here at our little mobile brooder box. Um, we built this about 12 years ago, and I do have an old blog that we don't really maintain anymore, but it has uh, plans for this, this unit. Um, I can post a link in the description for that. Um, but it's pretty simple, just a, a sheet of plywood, some 2 by 2s some hardware cloth. Got a little door here where the chickens can come in and out. Um, wanna... Lift it? Yeah, show us the okay. both sides open up. Um, there's a little shelter area over here that can go in and we can add some supplemental heat. And this opens up for access. Um, it's worked really well. This thing's actually about 12 years old. 
Uh, we did have to replace a couple boards and uh, reseal it this year. We, we seal it with a um, mineral oil and beeswax paste that we make works pretty well. So it's nice non-toxic uh, treatment and uh, we don't, you know, it's all untreated lumber. So, But it lasts forever. We found it's better to get them outside right away so they can start developing their immunity. Oh yeah, yeah, the day they come in the mail or you buy them at the, st we've got ours from Tractor Supply last year or even mama's hatching out. Granted they're on, they're on ships right now, but, um, but I have them on the grass and I'm moving them every day so they get exposed to all the plantain and grasses and stuff so they learn to eat that. If you just train them on, on seed, they're never going to understand that they cannot go out and forage. And you, I had chickens in the past that when me and Joe started, un, we had a, we had one of those hoop coop um, houses and in the winter we'd line it with straw bales and then tarp that over and that was our winter coop. And then in the spring we'd pull it all back and we'd have big worms and they'd freak. They'd just like run away from these big beautiful worms and I'm like, you guys, but I don't know. I guess it was just because they weren't exposed to it. Well, here's Rusty. Here's yeah, that's Russ. Yeah, he American turned out pretty cool. Um, so, I got him from a friend of mine. Yeah, we um, we like having the open bottom, and we can we can use the handles here to drag it around and move it, um, which we don't we're not doing right now because we had a broody mama in there. But when we've used this to rear chicks, um, it's nice to move it every day, get them off their manure and onto some fresh grass and. We think their immunity develops a little better when mm -hmm. they're out on open forage. Um, and then when they're adults, they also know how to eat better. Yeah, teach them, teaches them to forage right from the gate. And yeah. rather than doing the whole kiddie pool with wood chips, I, I've just we've lost more birds doing that way than we have getting them out of the land quicker and moving them every day. And the house stinks. Like, it's so much, yeah, once they're on the grass, they don't smell. Yeah, it's a much more pleasant, as long as we move them regularly, it's a much more pleasant experience for us. So, yeah, things, uh, it's worked out pretty well. It's held up pretty well. Yeah. The one thing I would say that I would change on this, though, is those handles in the front. Oh, I'd yeah. I'd like them in the back, because yeah. everybody, when you're pulling, all the chicks, granted, if the mom's, you know, if mom's with, who cares? But, um... But if it's just chicks in there and you're trying to push it forward, they run the opposite direction. Right. The chicks so. run away from you. So if I would have put the handles on this side, then we could see them when we're trying to move. And, uh, you know, as it is, we, we come over here by the handles and they all run in there where we can't see them. And that makes it really difficult to move without running anybody over or having problems there. So that, that would have been a better design if I would have just flipped the handles to the, uh, to the enclosed end. Yeah. Next one. <laughs> yep. Hey, dogs. <laughs> All right. I got to get through here without oh. shocking myself. Man, I got some crabby girls. Yeah, they're ready to move. Those cows are mooing. Hey, Sonata. What, Liberty? <laughs> Are you hungry, buddy? So Griffin got his cone off this morning. Let's see how he's doing. How's those ears, buddy? Uh, looking a little raw. You been itching again? Oh, yeah. Uh, shouldn't have left his cone off. What? I shouldn't have left his cone off. Had what? him in the cone of shame all last couple of days because he's been itching his ears so much. We think of the bugs are getting So now he's him. all bloody again? Yeah, they're opened up again. They were healed up or scabbed up this morning pretty good and he wasn't itching, so I left it off. Um, we've been treating him with a combination of Arnica and, um, oh boy. I think everybody's hungry, hun. <laughs> they are ready to move. <laughs> I guess I should have got the side-by-side -side in there. Well, I'll go open up a fence. That'll get their attention. Mm. Hi, Cheeks. <laughs> yeah. Hi, they, girls. You know, pretty good. We've been giving them maybe uh, somewhere between a quarter and a half acre every day. We can take this cross fest down 
But I think we need to shorten this one on the side too so they don't get stuck in there. <laughs> They're so... <laughs> I don't know why. I don't think the cows and the goats figured out that I opened this up this morning. I don't think so. They're like freaking out. Come on, guys! It, it is Come a on, small guys! Tag. This is probably a little under a quarter acre. So, yeah, we'll give them this. We got a little bit, bit of poo. No, there's some. I, I saw the sheep all come in here. I never saw the cows or the goats come in. Come on, guys! And here they come again. Goats, goats! Goats, goats, oh, goats! Running. Come on, cows! Hey, cows! Here, scoot over. Oh, here comes the goats. <laughs> come on, girls! Come on, goats! Come on, goats! Come on, cows! Dad, come over here. Come on, girls! Did come you guys on! Did you even know this was here? That you could come in here and graze? Come on! <laughs> I don't think you found it. Oh, look at how excited. <laughs> Happy cows! Hi, cheeks. Oh, there's a cheeky cheeks. Really? Was that worth? That was not nice. Come on, guys. There the cows go. Yeah. Come on, guys. So what we're gonna do today? We're gonna bring the mineral and the dog feeder down. And we're gonna open up this next paddock. Are your babies up there, Dash? And then I guess we'll just back fence from here to here, huh? They go from this one here right across to there. Come on, guys! Once, once Come everybody on. gets in here. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Come on, babies! Come on, babies! Come on, babies! All right, I'm gonna open this up. Okay. Come on, guys. Sorry. There it goes. Popcorn. Greg. Cuddles and her twins. Fallon. So Fallon flicked off a whole bunch, except for that top part. Like, he's in his summer coat on the bottom. And, yeah, I don't know. It just won't come off. <laughs> so... I'm guessing he's got some woolly in there or something. But look, there's 10. She also has just her neck and her top. I don't know. Usually everybody slicked off by now. Last year, anyhow. So it's interesting. We had green grass in April, which never happens. It's always the last couple of years. It's been middle of May. And then everyone was slipped off by June. Now we have grass in May. And everyone's not slicked off. <laughs> and they've had their kids. I don't know. Well, that made him happy. Yeah, interesting observation. Oh, there's some over there. Oh, she's sniffing that goldenrod. Not going for it, though. Passed up the yarrow, too. Little goats are going for the uh, birds with trefoil right away. Good. And the black ones over here, yeah. Birdfoot tree foil is anti-parasitic, so that's good. Yeah. It's interesting to see what they, they go for first. We gotta get up some more bird boxes up here for the swallows. Yeah. We got the one way up there on the telephone pole, but other than that. We could use some more. Yeah, the flies are pretty bad here. This is our first time grazing the West Valley here in this way with sheep I'll say. We had some cattle here and a little bit of sheep action last year, but this is our first time really going through a full rotation on it. And yeah, I don't know if it's weather or time of year, but the fly load's been pretty bad this year. Well, I think with all the rain too. Well, and we've got more animals, so bigger, bigger manure load, but that's part of the reason we need to back fence today, get them, let that part rest, let the manure break down and yeah. So everybody's in here. I'm just going to back fence from that point down to there, and they're going to be locked in here. But before we do that, we got to go get the dog food and the mineral. So.
four days of this is why you need to move your animals because everyone's camped out here right they like the shade tree it's getting just more impact than the rest of everything else and then you start to see uh some bear patches start to form right it's slight but it's happening and uh we don't want that we want we want a covering of the earth so that's uh they're done up here it's time to let this rest it'll be well it could be six months to a year before we're back here honestly so we like to do a long rest period and fortunate to have enough acreage and a small enough flirt to to be able to do that so well, that um, definite, like, no parasites, they... right yeah if the, you go Four months, yeah. If you, if you really want to, you know, guard against uh, reconsuming the parasites from your last visit, figure they start hatching after about three days, and they'll pretty much die out if they don't find a host within four months. So if we can be on a on a piece of ground for three days and then off it for four months, that really helps prevent uh, parasite infection. So. chasing us is it <laughs> I mean the mineral feeders yeah, knocked it off I just want to get to where we can get to it and yeah, move it up well, you know, don't leave it in an awkward spot that we can't get to it. Right. All right. This can handle the hills just fine as long as we take them straight on and we're not getting sideways. They're so excited. They know we're moving their food. They love it when we move their food. Well, the goats are distracted. Well, hello. Oh, you know what? Maybe they hear the other cows. <laughs> Maybe the neighbor's cows. They're calling everybody in. Come to our house. Maybe they just want to move. Yeah, I like Steve and Strawberry get in and check out some of this mineral. So the mineral feeder does work as long as goats aren't sitting on top of it. But looking at her head, we're going to have to go pretty tall with our deck to make that idea reality. Can you get it, Strawberry? Come on. There you go. Good girl. Hey, Libby. Liberty. You got a lot of flies on you. That doesn't seem too nice. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> No, no pets today. Yeah. No pets today. Hey. Okay, water shut off. Try not to touch this fence. Oh, okay. 
<sighs> this is a 70 gallon stock tank. Got our just a 5 8 hose feeding it and we'll get that disconnected and loaded up and then we can haul it down into the valley. And we're going to have to run several hundred feet of hose from our quick coupler down there to actually feed this. So go we'll start working on that. Easy. So I got our, our water spigot here. Um, I got to switch this over. This is a 250 feet of Flexzilla hose. It's no no breaks. There's no connectors in there. Just a continuous hose. I was able to find a a big spool of it online, and you know, eventually I'd like to trench in and get some poly pipe with some quick couplers, kind of out out on the land in various strategic locations, which are still being determined. But for now, this gives me 250 feet of reach. I can go from our quick coupler down there down to um, where the cows are. And I mapped it out and it was like 200, so there was uh, 230 feet, I think. So I should have it 20 extra feet of hose. Uh, I hope that's true because we're gonna need to get another one if that's if this doesn't reach. And uh, yeah, kind of a beast to lug around, but um, it's a good option to have. Beats carrying buckets, so here we go. So I got this red hose, it's just a, way to connect to this poly pipe here and when I'm not using it I do keep a cap on the end and I think that's really important um, what's gonna happen if I don't is spiders are gonna go in there and they're gonna spin some silk and stuff or debris or other insects can get in there and then that's gonna be in my pipe which is buried two feet underground for you know 150 feet that way and I don't really feel like dealing with getting this thing clogged, so I always make sure to put the cap on. And to make it easier, I drilled a hole in it and just put some uh, paracord on the screw that I hang the hose on. And just keep that handy, you know, so you don't have to deal with clogged line. And it's always ready to go, and I'll, I'll put that on after I winterize it too. I'll... Yeah, so I got that connected, and I can go ahead and turn it on right away. I can energize this line. There's probably some air trapped in there, but we'll get that out when we use our quick coupler. We've got these, um, it's a Plasson quick coupler. So this is the male end um, that goes into the into the fitting, and I got a little hose adapter on it. And yeah, you can't hook a hose directly to these. They are NTP threads. You need this uh, three-quarter NTP to three-quarter hose fitting. And then we can hook it to our regular garden hose and get water down there and life will be good. Ooh, Nikki's gonna carry this big heavy hose full of water for me. Yep. <laughs> After hiking up that hill. <laughs> yeah, I didn't bring a, a jug out. It's so cool today. It didn't, didn't even occur to me. So this existing concrete pad was here so we put our our other end of our water pipe right here where we can take advantage of this nice flat surface to put a stock tank on we did manage to get this hose wrestled up and coiled up into the back of the thing i, I think i need to build a a nice reel system where we can haul it around on a trailer and just spool out what we need but for now this is working and uh what we did is we took this six inch PVC pipe with a cap and buried that and then our, our Plasson quick couplers right down in there and again to keep the keep the lid closed so you don't get spiders and crap in there. Um, what happens is when we sit that male when we insert that male uh, end into that hole it clicks into place and water starts flowing. It's just a spring loaded valve so pretty cool. No nothing to turn on. We've already got water pressure. We just gotta get our hose laid out. Do. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> and then uh, put the end on and get it connected and we'll have water down there. So here's hoping the hose reaches. It, uh, it, it worked when I mapped it out, but reality is uh, sometimes different. Fine. <laughs> well, we made it just like we planned, about 20 feet to spare. So, so one thing that's really nice about using Google Earth well, Google Earth Pro, the desktop version we use, 
has a mapping function where we can draw draw a line or draw an area and figure out how big something is or how long something is so it allowed us to know that this would be enough hose to make it all the way down into that valley and water our animals so all that's left to do is to hook up our our quick coupler which is sitting right here you see there's a little spring hook on the end that we got to get over the lip on that thing so it's a little little tricky but there we go how'd you do that pushed really hard oh. I couldn't do it. <laughs> it's, it takes some practice and I'd like to get, this is a little spring, I should put some pea gravel in the bottom so that that uh, fitting is just a little more stable and it'd be, make it easier to push it down. But yeah, that's it. We'll, uh, that tank should be filling up. We'll go, do you, go oh, take do a you look. Feel the difference? Um, yeah, it feels, I mean, it feels like it's charged. Okay. Let's go make sure it's flowing. So a little tricky because we had to go under a few fences here um, all the way down through the valley here and hooked up to our our stock tank but you know we got to come down and check it you can't just plug that in and walk away but good news it's filling up um, we also want to stick around until it's full and make sure it stops. And then we've got our blue tank over there. And that one doesn't have water piped to it. But now we can just take our buckets, fill that one up. Um, this stock tank's nice. I like having the float valve and just, you know, 70 gallons of water on hand. But um, it's a little tall for the lambs and some of the goats. So we like having this shorter tank. We also like having multiple water sources with all these animals that might not always be getting along or sharing too well. Um, give everybody an opportunity to come get some water. Yeah, they'll have this pretty well flattened by tomorrow and then we'll give them that top section. And then we'll work our way down the next strip over here. Oh, I love watching these swallows just, just skimming the tops of the herd you know as the animals move they kick up insects and these swallows swoop in and grab them starting to sprinkle again yeah service berry it's a native wisconsin tree um goes well with the uh hickories or even a walnut guild and uh Oh, look at that. Griffin's drinking with his cone on. That's nice to see. I, I figured he was because he hasn't wasn't thirsty when I came out this morning to take it off him. But uh, it's good to see that he's figured that out. It's a little tricky. And... Mm. See? Gertie's supervising. Making sure Dad's all good. Doing his thing. Oh, there's he. There was a zoom. There we go. Fill this one up and I think we're golden. Yeah, one more fence to make hot and we're done with chores. Up um a couple days ago we had a... didn't get time last week, but this week. So we, we did buy a shear because we didn't have any idea how to find one. Nobody's and nobody, yeah, nobody, yeah, exactly. No one's coming out to shear with mama. So we got her sheared. It's not pretty, but we didn't cut her. She was really good. She, uh, she stood very well. She li tried to lay down a couple of times. Ouch, that was a rose. Um, but yeah, I mean, we just did the traditional barrel cut which is just around the middle. I didn't even get her back end, but I was worried she was gonna be too cold last winter, but she had put on enough weight and she's maintaining. And uh, yeah, she's looking good. And look at those goats go. Well, this is our, our original flock. This is the pig, the fainters, the painters. Good job, Richard. Oh, and this is cool. Richard 
ended up, how do I do that stick thing? He has all this, like, that's the last of his winter coat, but he was all blonde, remember? So now he shed that all off and he's back to being all brown, which is really crazy. So there we go, float valves up, tank has stopped running, it's not overflowing. That's really important because if we walk away and don't check that and it's stuck or something, this will be running all night and flooding this area and wasting a bunch of water. So good thing to see, you know, tank's not perfectly level, but it's good enough for our purposes. And we've got a couple backup waters and our blue tub over there. So we're good to go. Chores are done for this evening. I had a comment on one our, on our last video asking for an update and well I don't have much of an update. We uh, didn't get a lot farther cutting than uh, that video. We just had other chores we had to get to and ran out of time and it was really hot and since then it's been very wet. We've had a lot of rain and uh, I got my arms, arms just scratched all to heck doing that so Gave it a little rest, healing up the arms. And we got, you know, still got 100, 150 feet to clean up here and then uh, get our high tensile. I'm gonna put in some new posts and insulators and get this, this wire tightened up and working. But in the meantime, we had to get our animals moved. So we went ahead and put in a, a temporary uh, fence perimeter just so we could utilize this valley and, and keep, the, keep the herd moving. So. Um, yeah, this paddock here, they, they're just coming up the hill towards me right here. And then the one over there you can see has been grazed already. We're doing a little different tree protection now for these, these hickories. We do want to make sure these trees stay intact. So I think this is working pretty well. We just do uh, a little diamond, right? We've got our corner. It's a regular step in. Another corner brace set up so we just do a little four post diamond and when we're stringing up this paddock division we just come down and we go right around that tree in a little loop-de-loop -loop so we don't need an extra reel and then keep going so kind of got um, you know this fence is tight is uh, connected over there and then the next one over that way is connected on the other side so we can just doing a big S-shaped pattern down and then come back up the hill. And uh, where I'm standing right here, this will be tomorrow's paddock. And you can see that's uh, where they're at right now. If I can get a better view here, is where we just moved them to. Hi there. It is the next day. Uh, we got a little more done and I hadn't finished editing the video so I figured I'd I'll show you what's going on. I did get my uh, my sleeve things, farmer's friend sleeves. They're, they're pretty cool. I got these little silicone grippy things and they just kind of slide up and I don't know, I think it helped, helped uh, keep keep uh, my scratches down. Uh, let me show you what we got going on today. So we did our move this morning. You can see, I don't know if you can see the llama and some of the sheep at the top of the hill down there. And we've got our next few strips here. We need to figure, we needed to figure out how to fence off this big, it's about four acres over on this side. And um, yeah, we decided to just skip doing the rest of this fence line and we jumped ahead. So I started over here where this fence ends. And then our goal was to just cut a path you know, kind of like this, where we got a line set up. We can set up a temporary perimeter here in front of this high tensile fence. And I thought we were going to do that all the way through the woods. But uh, once we got down here, it uh, we found an old high tensile fence that's actually in better shape than I would have imagined. And I'd say that's about 500 feet long. And we just finished clearing the whole thing. And I broke the trimmer. <laughs> we are dog tired now. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm whacking this thing a little too hard and with a too dull of a blade and busted the handle off, but 
cost of doing business, so. Thank you to bring these back. What? You want to bring these back? Yeah, I'm just going to get some footage of what we did, and then I'll be right up. Uh, did you get the water bottle? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think that's everything. Did you get the eye shade? No. Yeah, yeah, I got the safety glasses and the hearing protection. All right. So, yeah, we kind of go down into this wooded area. And this is, I mean, this is all overgrown with ro roses and prickly ash. So, area we really want to get the goats in. Um, we come back here, there's a, a corner and just an old cattle panel gate here. And we've, we've actually got another, I don't know, probably about another 500 feet. There's about 10 acres of woods back behind us that we're not even going to try to get into um it's uh you know if i can get this side of the fence cleaned up and, and active as pasture that'll be a huge win and then I'll, then I'll start thinking about maybe doing something over there but for now we're just calling that zone five it's a nice place to hike um just too many thorns that's all but yeah we got this high tensile fence it's a six wire it was already existing um needs a little little bit of work missing some staples and some insulators but we got the the bottom two wires and then the the 30 inch wire here all insulated already so we'll be able to make those three hot which is going to be enough to keep our animals in and so we uh yeah we went to town here uh just cutting back some of these roses were 10 feet high on this thing and i was really glad i had my gloves and my safety glasses on and these uh sleeve thingies and jeans today no shorts and uh i'm also glad the temperatures come down a bit it's a little cooler than it was so not too bad and yeah we had to cut a few logs off here there's a rotten one down there that was on the wire and uh big big maple branch up here i had to get out the big bar and uh, work on that, but uh, come be here someday and pick up this firewood, but at least for now it's off the fence, and I don't know, see if the other half of this thing falls down someday, but uh, yeah, you can see a little rotted out in the middle, but uh, some maple, it'll burn, just going to be a trick or two to cart the rest of it, uh, cut it up and cart it out of here, so yeah, then we can go down this way another little log here we had to cut off the wire and yeah we're gonna have I um, mean we're pretty far back in the woods there's actually a big valley that's come up between us and the pasture now so we'll have to cut a trail that way and be able to subdivide this we'll cut a couple trails down through there next but this is gonna save us so much time just the fact that I don't have to put up this this uh, temporary fencing here and I can make a few strands of this hot and carry power all the way back here. And uh, yeah, it's just that much less step-in posts and poly braid to use and fence to set up and take down again. So yeah, it's it pretty steep back in here. And again, I still got to come back through and some staples and get everything tightened up and make sure it's all all the insulators are where we need them but uh, this is one I cut off on the other side and let's get that off the wire whoops yeah yeah and then we got a an old but functional corner down here um, this side here that cuts across the ravine there. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna try to make that hot. We're gonna find a different path and just use poly braid to, to cover this side of it because this is some gnarly topography. And you know, something, this uh, gully here isn't gonna work too well. But yeah, this is actually the ravine that forms out of the West Valley that we've been grazing. And then there's a little like peninsula over here. And if you can see on the other side, there's another ravine. And that actually comes off the, the other valley, the uh, East Valley. 
And then we have the pond up there and the dam for the pond, the overflow for the dam comes down this east ravine. And right up here is this cool little spot in the woods where the two creeks converge and flow off uh, off our property down to Camp Creek. And then from there, it's gonna feed the, the Kickapoo uh, River, um, part of that watershed. So pretty cool, makes me feel good to know that we're having a healthy ecosystem that's gonna deliver clean water downstream, you know, all the way through the Kickapoo, down to the uh, Wisconsin River, down to the Mississippi River, and out to the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So just want to be a positive contribution to that whole watershed. So if you like what we're doing here, give us a thumbs up, uh, hit that subscribe button. We'll keep making videos as long as you keep watching them. Uh, we do, really do appreciate your support. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.